we have had so many trades in here. Electricians, advantage plumbing, we've had the cutting edge joinery team installing these amazing cabinetries. Quite traditional, which I like, but with some super powered practical functional stuff inside from Hefeli, which I will show you really soon. So this means for me, a lot of people would stop here. A lot of people would go, I've got my appliances in. So you, you've seen the awesome high air appliances that have gone in. We've got in our sink, we're just waiting on our stone bench top. So a lot of people go, check, I am done. I can use this laundry. In fact, I was washing and drying in here last night. But for me, there is still so much missing from here. It feels impersonal, it needs some love, it needs some beauty, as well as some extra functionality. So I'm gonna turn my attention now to the opposite wall. We have this wall covered. Now let's work out what we can do on this one. At the moment, it is just as simple as we found out when I was taking the splash back off soft gyprock wall. Now remember this is a medium renovation, this is not a high, um, a high budget renovation. We're keeping the floor and I'm actually going to be keeping the skirt tile on this opposite side. But what I want to do is I want to install some hanging laundry baskets so that the family can come and sort their own, we hope, into lights, darks and colours. Now to do that on this gyprock wall would mean that it'd probably get knocked up and really look pretty bad after probably a month. So I want to install some panelling and also some tougher paint finishes on there so it can stand the test of time. And above that, as I mentioned earlier, I want to look at putting in some beautiful customised drying racks as well as some wallpaper that's going to bring some character, some texture and some pattern into this laundry as well as tie in the warmer brown tones that are already in the floor. challenges I'm going to have with this battening is I am not, as I mentioned, removing this skirt. So I only have a really small lip to play with. So I've actually had pre-cut from my local hardware supplier some really thin timber battens. And I'm going to install these on top so they're not going to look like the original sort of panelling that you'd imagine. They're a great tweak so I can still get the effect, I can still get the durability without having to risk replastering this whole wall and damaging my floor. So I've spaced these out. First I did it visually, because let's face it, they need to look good. And then I've measured it out to make sure that they're an equal distance apart. I'm actually gonna be sitting that on top of the tile skirt, making sure that it is absolutely vertical and then tacking it on with some really small nails. I'll then countersink them, putty them, paint them, and we're ready to go. Now the height that I've used to choose this is actually all about functionality, all about the height that I want the top rail to be and hence where I want the laundry baskets to hang from. I didn't want them too low because then they would hang on the floor. This is a wet area and I certainly don't want wet bags of clothes hanging from the wall and touching the floor. So I've done them high enough that once they're hung on their hooks, they'll have good floor clearance, so it doesn't matter what happens in this room, they will stay dry. This wallpaper is from Kingdom Home and is perfect for the laundry as it will have water, pets, kids, you name it in this room. This one can actually be wiped down and will handle anything the kids can throw at it, literally. Now that that beautiful wallpaper is in place, I'm going to get really busy fixing off that top button on the DIY panelling. Now when you're 
gapping in a place that you intend to paint over, make sure you use the right gapping product. It's not your standard silicon that you would use in your bathroom or on a splashback. It's actually an acrylic silicon that you can paint over with most paints afterwards. So make sure you get the right one. Now that this is all drying off, my putty and my silicon is drying off, I'm actually going to get to taping up that door. Now, it has been treated previously with a high gloss polyurethane finish. And so I'm going to need to undercoat and make sure that I seal that in really well. And I'm using one of my favorite products for that, the Zinza Cover Stain. Now this cover stain, as I said, is one of my favorite products but it is also oil based, so it is a Terps cleanup. So I'm gonna wear some gloves so I don't have to clean my hands up with Terps, because there's one thing that I know I am, and that is messy. I'm also gonna try and roll this cover stain on to make sure that I get a really nice, um, clear finish with minimal brush strokes. To do that, I'm gonna use one of the short nap microfiber rollers. Now my first coats of paint were on my panelling and on my door. So both of those were an enamel. I used an alkalide enamel on this panelling because I wanted something a bit more robust than a low sheen. And I used a gloss enamel with an oil base on the door to make sure that it was truly, truly hardy. Because it's going to get a pile of wear and tear as people go in and out with washing out to the clothesline. But on the rest of the walls, I am harking back to my old in favorite, which is a Taubman's in jaw. And I'm gonna be popping that on the very few places that you can still see the old sort of fawny brown taut color. the gloss enamel is dry. I did it over 20 hours ago now. So now I'm gonna give it just a light rough up the sandpaper, clean down and do the final coat. The blue is just turning out beautiful. I've painted me, I've painted the walls, I have painted everywhere. And now one of the things that I'm wanting to bring into this space is much more storage and the ability to dry clothes in there, the ability to have laundry baskets off the floor, the ability to have the peg out baskets away and not living in the lounge room space and the, the dining room space and the spare bedroom space like happens at so many homes. And so I've adopted a, an idea um, and I'm using an off the rack IKEA product. So this is some random form of kind of hanging, drying storage rack that I am going to first try and build. I think it was easier to paint and then I'm going to customize it because if I put in this sort of matte silver drying frame into that beautiful navy white floral pale blue dusty brown laundry it is going to look really out of place and this is a perfect example of off the rack things can be customized we don't have to buy old or recycled or second hand to want to customize you can actually buy new Now that I've got these drying racks together, I'm gonna to give them that beautiful navy finish that I talked about. So first, I'm going to rough them up a little bit with a metal um, sanding pad. 
I'm then going to etch them, prime and etch them to make sure that when I'm hanging coat hangers on here and when I'm hanging, you know, baskets over them that they don't get scratched up. And then finish off with, we know I'm a White Knight fan, finish off with one of the White Knight skirts in this beautiful deep navy. Always super important to spray paint in a well ventilated area or even outside. Now it's time for the stone to go in. Stone obsessions are so incredibly professional and the finished product is just amazing. washing baskets but instead I've got myself some gorgeous navy striped um, linen and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make three custom laundry baskets out of it one for the darts one for the lights and one for the delicates so this fabric is 115 centimeters wide and or oh, actually 1.2 wide and I got three meters of it now from that top rail of the battening to the floor, it is around a metre. I don't want these hanging on the floor. So I'm gonna aim for these to be around 900 mil or 90 centimetres in length. They are gonna look like little sacks. And the reason that I'm doing this is I wanna be able to change up some elements in my laundry as I choose. So you know, next year if I want these to be apricot, they can. If I want them to be white, if I want them to be linen, if they get grubby, I can throw them in the washing machine or replace them. A really tiny investment for a really big bank buck. So all I'm gonna do, I'm going to cut this into three separate sacks, pop some little gold eyelets on them, and then secure them to hooks on the wall. As simple as that. And if you're not a sewer, never fear. You do need a sewing machine, but you don't need a lot of sewing prowess. There you have it, a stylish and practical laundry the whole family can enjoy. know we run workshops for all things DIY and renovation? I've popped the link below with our schedule for the rest of the year. Hope to see you there sometime soon.